Okay, we'll start off with Jason Kersey and then go to Joe Bettner. Jason. Hey, Austin. Um, with the position group that you guys have, with Jeremiah, Mikey, Braden, uh, obviously when he's healthy, how much do you, do, do, do you guys make each other better? I mean, it seems like an extremely competitive group, uh, but you all are still getting to play. Oh yeah, for sure. It's uh, very competitive, but uh, that's what's that's what's good about it. Pushing us, uh, it all starts in practice. So um, you got to be in your A game all week, and um, just playing like you, uh, practicing like you play every week. Joe Bettner and then Ryan Aber. Austin, with last year waiting for your opportunity to be the kind of the leader. Uh, for that HBAC group, what's it been like, I guess, going through that process of kind of waiting for this opportunity and now kind of realizing that you're, you know, the leading receiver for this OU offense? Uh, you know, last year, you know, it was obviously there's some points where, you know, you could get frustrated, but I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't trade last year for anything because it taught me so much. Uh, I was able to learn a lot from uh, Grant, uh, Lee, and Braden and uh, Jay Hall. I was able to learn, and I wouldn't be the player I am today without it. And um, a lot to get better at, but I'm very grateful for having that year last year to learn. Thank you. Ryan Aber and then Eric Bailey. Yeah, Austin, when you were going through the recruiting process and, and looking at this offense, how much did you look at how OU used uh, Mark Andrews and the, the matchup uh, problems that he presented and, and how much do you feel like you fit uh, into that kind of role? Uh, yeah, I looked at that a lot. Uh, that was kind of who who I was looking at when I was coming out of high school. How they used him, and they, I loved the way they used him, and I felt like that fit my game, my gameplay the most uh, in the country. So that's why I came here. Appreciate it, Austin. Eric Bailey, and then Bob Prisbillo. Hey, Austin, can you talk a little bit about your relationship? With Coach Beamer, you guys arrived at the same time, and what's it been like growing at that position with him as your coach? Uh, yeah, I think he came a year before I did, but um, uh, I like I love Coach Beamer. He's uh, my favorite coach, uh, one of the favorite coaches I've ever had, and um, he's great. He's a great coach, and he uh, knows the game. He makes me a better player. Thanks, Austin. Bob Prisbillo and then James Hale. You know, when we uh, Austin, when we talked to Coach Beamer and during preseason, he mentioned. He really wants you guys to work on yards after catch through the first four, four games. How would you evaluate how you guys as a position group have done in that facet? Uh, we've done better, but there's always there's always room to improve. And um, just like everything, there's room to improve, and that starts in practice. So, okay, James Hale and then Keegan Rennell. No, Stog. TCU, they run a lot of complicated things in the secondary. They've had guys they've always sent to the NFL. They always have a good secondary mix in what they do and everything. You do such a great job of finding spaces, holes, and things like that for Spencer to throw to you. Talk about what you see out of TCU and, and you know, this, this, this situation you have with Spence, this connection you guys have. Um, you know, I'm sure you're looking forward to seeing that thing grow. Oh yeah, no doubt. I mean, TCU's got some dudes on the other side. So um, yeah. just like every week, we got to work, and um, you know, it starts in practice. So. And your connection with Spence? Oh yeah, um, you know that's grown. We've uh, we did a couple stuff before, you know, high school with the opening and then the All American Games. So uh, we've started the connection there, and it just kept growing and growing. And um, you know, we got a pretty good connection now. Thanks, man. Keegan Renault and then Brandon Drum. Yeah, Austin, I'm, I'm just curious with the blocking with you guys this year. It seems like you guys are doing a lot more two tight end stuff. Um, how much have, have you been, you know, disappointed in the way that you've blocked? Have you been, you know, impressed with it? And how much growth um, do you think you have in that area? Uh, you know, there's always room to improve in, in everything. I felt, I, I, I felt like I haven't blocked uh, near to my potential that I can. But um, um, there's always room for improvement, but I've, for sure came a long way in that from last year and I'll continue to improve. Okay, Brandon Drum and then Parker Thune. Hey Austin, Spencer talked about the relationship you guys had before you got here. You touched on it just a second ago, but can you talk, he said you guys were committed at the same time. Can you describe uh, that process uh, where you committed the same week? You 
describe that process that y'all. They had us uh, come up here the um, at the same time. So yeah, we were both on the same visit. And we both committed at the same time, and uh, we just since then we were the first two to commit, and then uh, since then our relationship has grown, like texting and whatever, and uh, we're good friends now. So that's just grown on and off the field. Okay, let's go to Parker Thune and then Kerry Murdoch. Yeah, Austin, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about Mikey Henderson, a guy who's earned some playing time alongside you and Jeremiah thus far this season. What have you seen from him? How has he grown on being a true freshman in that offense? How has he been able to accelerate so quickly? Uh, he's going to be a great player, but um, he's grown so much since he's got here. Um, he's super athletic, and um, he's going to be a great player. He, um, he works hard. He works really hard, and uh, he's a smart kid, so he's going to be great. Kerry Murdoch, and then Ryan Chapman. Austin, I'm curious, when you watch back tape, like, for instance, the Texas game, uh, you had the play out on the edge uh, where you just snuck by the first down marker and, and you were taken down by uh, a single DB. Like, when you watch that back, does that kind of infuriate you just with your size? And, I, you know, I don't know if you kind of watch, like, guys like George Kittle or Gronkowski and just – aspire to be that type of a physical player on the football team field can you just talk about kind of that dynamic with you and your size uh yeah no doubt I mean uh yeah it does make me kind of pissed off but um uh there's always I don't know it's just yeah it does piss me off a little bit yeah but um it's always something I got to work on and um you know it starts like I've said every day in practice so I'll continue to improve on that what would you do different if you had that situation over again? Well, I mean, I, I run the run the ball with the same intent every time to run through a dude's face and go score. So it just happened to be uh, whatever happened. So I'm not implying anything by that. I'm just, you know. No, you're I, good. <laughs> okay, let's go to Ryan Chapman. Hey, Austin, um, obviously uh, Theo Weiss last season sitting behind C.D. Lamb, not as much playing time. What have you kind of seen out of him as he's grown through this year? Because you and uh, Weiss had big days there in the second half of the Cotton Bowl. Uh, he hasn't um, – I don't think he's – I don't think he's – he's changed as a player, but not his mentality. Um, and that's what makes him so good. He came with the same mentality last year, just working to get better every day. And he does the same thing uh, this year. So uh, that's why he's so great is because he works so hard. and. Um, but obviously he made a lot of big plays the past couple of weeks. So, Thanks, Austin. And we'll go to Myron Patton. Yeah, Austin, uh, can you kind of, I guess, explain to people out there as they say, hey, you have a good connection with Spencer Radler. Does that like him reading your body language, just a lot of work in the off season? Just kind of explain to people what that means or what that feels like when he kind of knows what you're going to do and you kind of know what he's going to do. Uh, it's no doubt the work in the off season, uh, all the work we put in, uh, continuous routes on air and seven on seven in the off season. Um, we kind of we kind of have a good feel for each other. I kind of know where he'll put the ball. He knows where I'm running. So it's a feel where he knows what you where you like it. Uh, yeah, I mean, kinda. I mean, I don't really care where I like it. I just got to make a play on the ball. But he knows uh, he knows where to put it with me 